Hello again. It's nice to be, uh, to be back and to see you coming to life with your questions and your discussion. It's a great, it's a great feeling in the room. So I'm going to talk a bit about not just professional development, but development of the profession. Because in oncology nursing, things are changing. I have no disclosures. There is no financial uh, problem, so I disclose nothing. And I start by saying that Europe, which is where we are, is a very varied continent. And there are very different politics in each country. And nurse, the, the role of the nurse in each country varies a lot. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the fact that the nursing workforce is very flexible, but in some areas, I think it needs to develop a stronger voice. I don't know if your country is in that category, but you may want to think about some of the issues that are happening in other countries and what you would like to think about here in, in Russia. So we were just next doors, with Susie and I were next door speaking to the physicians about the role of multidisciplinary working. And I presented this slide that cancer nurses today provide expert care, coordination, treatment and psychosocial interventions that go beyond the biomedical, that go beyond just the cancer. I think as nurses, we think about more than just the cancer. We work within the multidisciplinary team and we promote cultures of well-being and patient safety. And we've just heard some examples from Johan about patient safety in terms of extravasation or acute allergic reactions. In the UK, cancer nurses work across hospital and community. So they work across the acute and the, the home care sector. And we have to respond to new treatments. I'm sure you've had to respond to the new immunotherapies that have become available for patients. So we have to be flexible and we have to be ready to take education as these treatments change. But I would argue, and Eons would argue, that sometimes the role of the cancer nurse is not always recognized or rewarded as much as it should be. And one thing you want to think about is pay, salary. I don't know if you can read this slide, but we've just done a study in EONS looking at salaries across four countries for nurses who are newly qualified. This slide is always very interesting to people. But you can see here there are four countries, Estonia, Germany, the Netherlands, and the UK. And this, this is the salary per month before tax. So you can see in, the, in Estonia, just over 1,000 euros. I don't know what that is in ruble. Uh, you mean in Estonia, in Estonia it's like 70,000 uh, rubles, for example. So uh, one euro is like 70 rubles. Okay. In Germany, it's about double that. So in Germany, 2,400 euros. In the Netherlands, 2,500. And in the UK, 2,500. So about the same for those countries. But when someone becomes advanced practice, clinical nurse specialist, they have a master's degree, some of them may have PhDs, then you can see here that the salaries change. So in Estonia, it doesn't change very much. So the nurses there do not feel motivated 
to study. If you look at Germany, it goes up to three and a half thousand. But in Germany, again, salary is not always equated with qualifications. In the Netherlands, you can see it's higher, 4,300 euros per month. And in the UK, at the, the very top of the career ladder, six and a half thousand euros per month. This is for people who have many years of experience, advanced practitioners, nurse consultants like Johan, and people who work independently and who have master's degrees and doctorates. So you can see the difference in the salaries in terms of the way cancer nursing varies across our continent. It would be interesting to know how that compares to Russia. But maybe we can look, we can discuss that later. What's the salary for a, for a new nurse here? It depends on the center, depends on the experience, but I think from... Da, da. I'm afraid to tell, you know, this ought, assume... da, ought, uh, It also depends on the source of foundation. In regions we have like 14,000 rubles. <laughs> okay, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> can I, can I a little bit more? <laughs> I'm joking. So I think it's like five hundred dollars euros. Yes, am I right? At least. Yeah. No, less, even less. Okay. So in small cities, I read it to hear that it can be three hundred euros in small regions. But in Moscow, in uh, Saint Petersburg, it's it could be le let's say one thousand euros, okay. and sometimes even more. I'm talking about St. Petersburg. I know that. I was talking with our head of uh, outpatient clinic, so maybe another center. I'm talking about our center. So the message then is that nursing in Russia is behind in terms of money. I don't know about roles or career. or So there's a message there for you to think about in terms of developing the, the role of the cancer nurse. And this slide is always interesting to people because it shows a, a, a wide range. And what happens in London, where I live, is that nurses travel there to get more money. But we are short of nurses. So in London, we give a salary, but we also give extra money for working in London, about 800 pounds per month. So nurses are moving across Europe. They're moving around the world. They're, they're, a short, they're in short supply. I don't know that we have any Russian nurses yet, but I wouldn't be surprised if nurses start to move to countries where they get more money. So this is an issue to think about in terms of the future development of the profession. And in other countries, this is an example. This says nurses on strike in Portugal. I don't know if your nurses ever strike here in Russia. <laughs> Colleagues, please answer. Irina Valerievna, do we have strikes, nursing strikes? No, I, I've, I've never heard. I've never heard about it. It's not, you know, part of our culture, culture to make strike. It's not really part of the UK culture, but it has happened sometimes. Because in Portugal, the nurse's salary has been, has been cut because of economic problems. And they strike regularly. They leave emergency cover in the hospital, and they come out on the streets, and they strike. Sometimes they get what they want, sometimes they don't. But it's part of their culture to strike. It's interesting, across Europe, the different ways that nurses respond. Danny, Danny can I add something? Yeah. Uh, 
I live in Belgium and we have a great repetition about striking because as something has happened from eons, it's always a strike in Belgium. <laughs> but like That's for true. nurses, as nurses, we don't strike. It's very difficult for us because, and the most important thing is like, we feel responsible for our patients. We always think like, what's gonna happen with our patient if we're going to strike? Mm. Who's gonna care for them? And that's a mechanism that's behind, that, behind it. But I think it's still very important that we take political actions like this to get our point as nurses, because we have also a very strong voice, because we are the biggest healthcare provider. If you look at healthcare providers, so, I think this is a, yeah, a point we have to really think about it. How are we going to get this? Yeah. In the UK, we do not strike, but we do demonstrate. So this is our president here, Celia. She was the president of the Royal College of Nursing. And these are young nurses out on the streets because they capped our salaries for seven years. And the nurses did not strike but they demonstrated to the government. They were on television, on radio, in the newspapers, taking political action. And this is important in terms of finding a voice. I don't know, again, it's culture. It may not be normal in your country to do this, to demonstrate, but in the UK, it's very common. This is in London, and uh, the nurses gather and they invite politicians to come and speak and they make a lot of bring a lot of attention onto the profession I'm not going to talk about very much about recan but this is a project that we've done in eons where we've looked at research that's been carried out by cancer nurses clinical trials by cancer nurses so the best quality of research. And we found that across the world, these are the countries that are doing research in clinical trials led by cancer nurses. So you can see the US, Canada, Europe, Asia, and Australia. So those are the countries where nurses are active as researchers. And if you look at it uh, in more detail, you can see that in terms of Europe, the country where most nursing research happens is at the UK, on the very bottom. So it is happening, but it's not happening everywhere. I don't know if it's happening here in Russia. Uh, what research are you talking about? So they involve nurses doing nurses, research. They are doing research, but only in international studies, which were supported by pharmaceuticals company. That's it. Okay. That's it. They they do not initiate their own studies here, okay. unfortunately. Again, something to think about, because nurses, when we looked at what they did, these are the kinds of topics that they looked at. They're interested in risk prevention early diagnosis, screening of patients, diagnosis. But the main focus for nursing research is here, treatment. So that relates to what Johan has just said about extravasation, nausea and vomiting, pain control, these very practical problems that patients are facing as they go through their cancer experience. I won't look at that because I think it's, I'll look at this one very briefly. I said that in the world, there is a shortage of nurses. And that's because countries train different amounts of nurses. This is a very small diagram. But in Europe, we can see that the country who produces the most nurses is Norway. And Norway is a very rich country. They produce the most nurses, followed closely by Switzerland. And then we look at Ireland, Luxembourg. So there's, 
the UK, my country, is down here. So we don't produce as many nurses as Norway or Switzerland. And again, it's about how do we meet the needs of our patients if we don't produce enough nurses. So we need to be political. That's my message, really, is we need to get into the parliament. This was the EON's uh, RECAN project. I don't know who this man is in the middle speaking, but um, this was us talking in the parliament, in the European parliament in Belgium, telling about a RECAN project and talking about the importance of understanding the role of nursing. So I think that's an important message in terms of nurses becoming political and being political in terms of finding a way forward to deal with our problems. This is a UK issue, I won't dwell on it, but we're going through a certain problem called Brexit at the moment. I don't know what that's going to do to our nursing. Um, I know in the States, I know you've had the Lancet Oncology, the Moonshot. These are, we've had a national plan in the U United Kingdom. These are major policy developments that require a workforce. I'm going to finish on this one, actually, because I think it's a good message to finish on. These policy programs are very ambitious. So the Moonshot, as I understand it, was intended to advance the treatment of cancer that would have happened over 10 years to make it happen over five years. And that was led by Joe Biden, I believe. <clears throat> so a very ambitious, it was called the moonshot because it was so ambitious. In the United Kingdom, we also have these policy announcements by the government that says we will reduce the number of cancers, people dying of cancer in our country. But in order to do this, we need the workforce, we need the educated workforce, the well-paid workforce who are available to make these things happen. And if we do not have the nurses educated and motivated and flexible and willing to be creative and to take on new and more responsibilities, then these ambitious plans are not going to happen. So our role in EONS is to ensure that in a European context that we will advocate for cancer nurses and we will make sure that what we need for the future is, is understood by the politicians in Europe, but also in our own, our own countries. So I think, Susie, I will stop there, and happy to take questions later, if there are any, but I think the message really is, EONS can offer a voice to nurses, as can ONS, and it's important that we find that voice. So thank you very much. Dos vidanya.